Angela from SpinachTiger.com, cooking big, fat, healthy food, and a lot of gluten-free baking. Um, before I get started, I wanna let you know that the ingredients and the amount of ingredients will always be at the end of the video. I get a lot of comments about that. Then the link to the blog post where the recipe is printed out beautifully for you with lots of tips and hints will always be the first thing in the comments. So you can always get the full recipe with all of my tips and, and um, special notes on baking at spinachtiger.com. And I try to make that really super easy for you. So don't forget that. Now, the first thing we're gonna do in making a gluten-free French bread, which by the way, has gone through rigorous testing. I think I've made this 12 or 15 times to get it to where I want it to be. Crispy on the outside, crunchy, and um, soft on the inside. First thing we're gonna do is take one and a half cups of warm water, warm meaning 110 degrees. If it's not um, warm enough, then here's what's gonna happen. Your yeast won't activate. But if it's too hot, which often people do, then you're gonna kill your yeast. So two tablespoons of yeast going into this, and we'll just let that sit for a minute and I'll talk to you about these dry ingredients. Please make sure you get everything out because there's a lot of little ingredients and if you miss something like the xanthan gum, then your recipe isn't gonna come out right. This dough, by the way, it's not like a real glutinous French bread. It's completely different than that because it is gluten-free and it's more like a batter. And I'm gonna show you, you know, how to make this and still be able to eat gluten-free and have that satisfying French bread or sandwich rolls, which makes, makes great for that. So we're gonna put about a, one and a half teaspoons of salt into two cups white rice flour, one cup tapioca flour. I'm gonna put in a teaspoon of xanthan gum, which is very important because that's what kind of holds everything together. Uh, the sugar I'm gonna to add to my yeast as it kind of like feeds the yeast. And then something that I like to put into all of my baked goods is some golden flax meal. So, um, and it's, it's this one, it's finely ground and two tablespoons of that. That adds not only just um, fiber, but a little body to gluten-free bread, which it needs. And mix that up really good. Non-fat dry milk, three tablespoons. That's my next dry ingredient. So we've got all of that. I'm gonna put this into a KitchenAid. If I do this, dump it like that. Now let's give this just a little bit of a mix to make sure all those ingredients are mixed up pretty well. What we have left to still put in um, is secret low ingredient is vinegar, which tenderizes. Tenderizes pie crust, tenderizes bread. So I'm just gonna add that to my eggs. I've got three egg whites that I'm just gonna loosely beat up a little bit. I'm gonna add the yeast mix in. See how easy this is? This is really easy. Mix this up just a bit. Last thing I'm gonna add is two tablespoons of butter, softened of course. Don't be tempted to add more because gluten-free flours don't absorb fat very easily. You don't want greasy bread. Okay, so here's the batter. And what does it look like? It looks like sticky batter. It doesn't really look like dough or it almost looks like biscuit dough. Uh, remember, it's gluten-free, so it's not gonna, not gonna be like a French bread dough. This is what I use, though. I use this French bread pan because I want something that holds it because this bread tends to flatten out. You can put it into a cast iron pan or a Dutch oven, but keep in mind that when you do that, please use parchment paper. 
Um, this I already know from experience. This is an awesome nonstick pan, doesn't stick. I don't need to worry. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna start um, kind of dividing up in fours. And the reason I don't do two lobes, I have found a kind of a little secret because it does flatten out. And also um, we'll eat one and we'll freeze three. And it's just, it's, it's kind of like, we'll feed, you know, two to four people, a couple of pieces each, if we do it this way, so it's perfect. We're not gonna waste any bread. And by the way, it does freeze quite beautifully. Then you just stick it in the oven and heat it up and voila. Okay. So you're gonna see, and you wanna have a bowl of water Now this is the part that's gonna be challenging. You wanna get it as skinny as possible because you don't want it to overflow. And that has happened to me before. This is probably the only part that's a little um, harder to grasp and, and get right. And I've got this great spatula that just works wonders. We want these long and skinny and give them plenty of room to grow. I'm gonna wet my hand and I'm gonna kinda do this. And wet, wetting the dough is good for the dough. Once this is ready to sit and rise, it only takes about 25 minutes. Actually, once you get good at this, you have French bread start to finish in about 60 minutes because it doesn't take very long for these. See, you can smooth it out. and I'm gonna slash it and let it rise. Okay. So keep in mind, you're gonna have to wipe this off. Okay, now I'm gonna get, get these a little bit shaped and I'm just gonna do all the way. What I have found since this is really sticky is if I start and just pull out stop all the way through, it, it just makes it so much easier but you have to keep wiping your knife. So one last thing, we're gonna to top this with sesame seeds. This is an option, this is something that I just love because this reminds me of Sicilian bread. Actually, you could put an egg yolk in there to, to bring that color of that delicious Sicilian bread if you wanted. I will give you some options on ways you can play around with this and there will be more recipes coming because I have a focaccia recipe coming and I use kind of the basics of this and that's pretty awesome too. So there you have it. I like a lot of sesame seeds. This is what I have right now. It doesn't look like much, but it's gonna rise for the next 25 minutes. I'm gonna set my oven at 400 degrees. I'm gonna sit this on top of the stove. I'm not gonna cover it because it's kind of sticky. I'm gonna leave it just like it is and then I'm gonna bake it and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Okay, so it's been about 25 minutes. You can see how they've risen. They've got little bubbles in there and that's the air. So then they're gonna rise some more as they bake in the oven on the lower rack for about 20 minutes. I'll check them at 400 degrees. Also, in the meantime, I made focaccia. Okay, so we're out of the oven and it took about 25 minutes. That's all it took. And we have our delicious gluten-free French bread. We've got a nice brown crust on the bottom and you can see it did not stick because of this awesome pan. You can get that link and the full recipe with tips at Spinach Tiger. The ingredients, of course, here at YouTube will be listed um, right at the end. So you're gonna see that. This is why I like doing little slashes. So you can just cut, break your pieces off like that. And it's um, kind of fluffy inside. I've already tasted it, it's crunchy. You want me to taste it? Okay. So. There you go, you got a little crunch. How would you eat this French bread? I've already done like a big giant BLTA in here. We've made um, cheesesteaks with this bread. 
So there's so many things that you can do now that you have a nice crunchy bread and not that typically gooey bread that you find in the grocery store. Make your gluten-free baking products with spinach tiger because I really do test these recipes. Don't forget to go to spinachtiger.com to get the full realm of how this bread is made with some extra tips there for you and links to some of the things that I use for this recipe that I think are important. Thank you for coming to my cooking channel. Don't forget to subscribe because I really do appreciate that. Check me out on Instagram. I do a lot of stories at Spinach Tiger on Instagram. A lot of little behind the scenes kind of fun stuff. And um, I'll see you next time at Spinach Tiger's cooking channel, cooking big, fat, healthy food.